Thank you very much, Aika. And um, well, uh, indeed, so the proposition that I put forward today is that we can achieve technology development if um, if, if we can connect the, uh, the, uh, the work that is done in academia with the needs that industry has. Um, and um, um, well, uh, TNO is, is placed at, at the middle of, uh, of, of these two worlds. OK. Uh, but today, uh, what I what I like to to concentrate on it's it's not so much uh, the the work overall of TNO as TNO uh, looks at, at uh, a broad range of subjects. It's more um, it's more uh, through the program Voltachem, which makes it its mission uh, to do the electrification and decarbonization of chemical production in industry. And Voltachem is, is conceived as a program as a, um, a coherent program that operates on different lines to uh, um, uh, um, and looks at hydrogen production through electrolysis, but also chemicals production. Um, we have a big dream, <laughs> and this is our vision for the chemical industry. So in the future, we would use renewable uh, feedstock and renewable electricity to, to create chemical products and fuels in such a way that it's cost effective and then it can uh, maintain our, our way of life. Um, and in, in such a such a big dream and such a complex picture, um, you can uh, you can imagine that it is um, um, uh, it, it is a difficult place to to start and introduce new technologies, uh, and that's because we are we are facing at the same time several challenges. I take here an example. Um, uh, for instance, let let us look at CO2 and the CO2 value chain, right? So we have multiple challenges here. So we can ask ourselves, okay, how do we how do we uh, uh, use intermittent electricity sources? Um, uh, how do we uh, how do we reduce the CO2 that is currently put in the atmosphere? Um, and how do we create value for CO2? And if you ask each of these questions individually, then you will have perfectly good answers for each of the individual questions. But what we are um, what, what we are proposing is that what will the solution look like if you are asking these questions at the same time? Right. So um, how will your solution look like? And, and when we are looking at the specific question of, of utilizing uh, uh, renewable electricity and utilizing CO2 and making valuable products from it, then we say, OK, you, you have to think of technology integration. This is this is what is going to bring um, uh, and, and make CO2 as, as, a, as a valuable uh, a resource. Right. And uh, you have on the one hand uh, that, that CO2 needs to be uh, to be captured from a point source um, from industry and you need a, a way of utilization. And, and because we are working in Voltachem, our way of utilization will be obviously electrochemistry. But by doing um, this integration of CO2 capture and electrochemical conversion, we are uh, we are generating new research questions. Uh, we have the potential of reducing the, the entire um, uh, the entire costs of, of such an installation if it will be uh, implemented at an industrial site. Uh, also, we have the the opportunity to to decrease the operational costs um, um, costs, but uh, at the same time creating new um, uh, new challenges uh, for it, for the process itself. And these challenges, they need to be researched. We will need new materials. We will need uh, new ways of, uh, of of thinking of electrochemistry of CO2. Um, so uh, we are creating in this way not only um, um, a potential cost reduction and a potential value chain, but we are also creating um, a, a, a route to uh, develop novel solutions. So. Um, when we are looking at uh, at these um, um, at these steps of taking an idea um, and making it all the way into a, into a commercial plant, we can also uh, look at it as through through these uh, technology readiness levels, right, from one to nine. Then academia it's it's placed in this uh, in this initial part, and industry it's in the final part, and uh, and TNO. Uh, and through also its uh, its more um, defined pro uh, programs like uh, Voltachem is operates typically in this middle range, 
right? So it is very crucial for us to uh, to follow the research of our colleagues, like uh, that, uh, for instance, what uh, what what Rud was saying about the the e refinery um, uh, results. The it's very important for us to to know what they are doing and what they are discovering, but at the same time also talk to industry and see how they are looking at the problem, because in in a way we have to be aware that we are looking at the same problem, but um, through different perspectives. For instance, you can have the, the top down view um, uh, when you're looking at CO2 and the, and, and the big picture, the top down view is that, you know, currently CO2 is being released in the atmosphere, dot. <laughs> um, and we can imagine scenarios in which, OK, uh, if we consider CO2 a big problem and then uh, we have to capture it and store it. Uh, and we can stop there, but uh, we could also um, ask ourselves, OK, but what if we would utilize CO2? How would we create uh, new, new chemicals from CO2? And, and this is where um, this is where we come with uh, uh, with our technology development. Um, it's uh, uh, the electrolysis of CO2 um, does not exist in a vacuum. CO2 will have to come from somewhere. It will have to come from a point source or from atmosphere, but it will have to be uh, captured, processed. Um, the electrochemistry, it's one part of it, uh, but then there will be uh, a, a chain afterwards that the products that are coming from electrochemistry uh, can be used further to, uh, to create chemical products that are useful and commodity products, if you wish. On the other hand, you have the bottom up view. And um, we shouldn't trivialize this either, um, because when you are looking at this electrochemical uh, uh, system, it is it is one process in itself, but it is a very complex uh, process. So uh, what is the question that you are going to solve here first? Um, uh, you can optimize on current density or on stability of materials or on selectivity. But all these uh, parameters are so incredibly interconnected that by uh, uh, addressing one and optimizing on one, and uh, you you are um, uh, 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 skewing this, uh, this this puzzle to one direction that probably will not give you the optimal result when you want to to take this one step further on its development. So um, the approach that we come up with, uh, it's somewhere in, in this middle ground. Um, uh, we are not building industrial plants, <laughs> uh, but and we are not uh, and we are not doing, uh, let's say, mechanistic studies or, or very detailed um, um, uh, research and, and material development. What we are looking at is we are looking at uh, the work that um, the, the researchers uh, uh, are publishing in, on uh, on different electrochemical materials and different electrochemical systems, and then we are uh, we are testing them in the laboratory uh, in, into small uh, small rigs, and we are trying to build a process out of it. At the same time, we're doing uh, uh, economic evaluations to see if the choice of our uh, process conditions and of uh, the materials that we have uh, will make sense into a bigger picture and will make sense to be scaled up further. And you can imagine that this is an iterative process um, that uh, it's 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 ever perfecting and ever um, uh, improving. Um, um, I, I want to give you now an example on this um, on this particular uh, integration of capture and conversion. So um, uh, and, and this is to illustrate um, how uh, incredibly um, um, uh, frustrating it can be to work uh, to work on on such a uh, uh, on such a route, uh, and and probably uh, we would have uh, we would have had quite quite a few publications in this journal of uh, trial and error um, if we, if we knew about it um, because when we have defined this concept of integrating CO two capture and, and electrolysis, uh, it was a few years back, and then uh, for the longest time we had uh, we have mostly um, uh, negative results or we weren't able to produce anything uh, with CO2. But then we carried on um, and then eventually by uh, by having um, uh, the right combination of, of, of process conditions and, and capture solvents um, 
and, uh, and the right materials, we were able to make some steps and then to, uh, um, uh, to increase the selectivity towards the product that we were targeting. In this case, it was formic acid, uh, the product uh, that we target. And um, um, if, you, if you are curious about, about these results, um, uh, you, can, um, you can also look at the uh, paper that my colleague uh, have published recently. So, uh, and, uh, but these are only the first steps, right? Um, when you take from idea to, um, uh, to implementation, it is already a, a quite a painful um, 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 process. Uh, but to take it even further from here, then you need again to, um, you need the, the uh, materials that are, um, uh, that are high performing, uh, and you need also the companies that are able to to carry on and uh, and develop these materials, scale them up together with your process scale up, right? So um, the fact that we are uh, that we are scaling up and uh, and and develop these technologies, um, it's it's one aspect. But when the material development lags behind, then we will be uh, we will be hampered in uh, in developing it further. So, um, you know, the, the, the fact that that companies like like VS Particle are dedicating their efforts into uh, making um, uh, materials for electrolysis and customized materials for electrolysis um, makes makes it a bit more realistic for us to uh, to scale up and then to to demonstrate these technologies uh, um, uh, on a faster timeline than if that wouldn't happen. Um, now, um, um, it's um, it's the materials and, and, and the process are so well interconnected uh, that uh, that we we cannot uh, we cannot do one without the other, right? So um, the higher the scale it will be, the more material we will use and and uh, and uh, high performing materials which have also uh, a high um, um, uh, a high stability as well, um, and um, uh, at the same time, we need to to be able to have the facilities to to test this. Um, and uh, uh, part of our work at uh, at Voltachem and at TNO is to develop different types of of test rigs in which we can do these electrolysis reactions. At different uh, at different scales, but also under different conditions, at higher pressures or at higher temperatures, um, and uh, to to be able to uh, replicate as much as possible uh, conditions that are uh, found into um, into uh, real operating plants. Um, and uh, and we do this together in, with projects with uh, with our partners, uh, both uh, from industry and from academia. Um, and um, it is an um, an, an ever growing network. Um, and uh, and, and the, our the questions that we are trying to answer are are more and more uh, complex. So I hope that. Um, um, uh, I, I gave you an idea of um, uh, of the way that that we are working and the way that we are uh, looking at the um, at this question of how do you um, how do you create uh, value and how do you take a, a technology uh, how do you take an idea and transform it into an actual technology that can be scaled up and that can be implemented and um, uh, and for this purpose you would need both sides uh, the um, in-depth knowledge from academia, uh, but also asking the right questions from the industry side. Um, this is the team uh, that works uh, together uh, together with me. Um, and uh, uh, well, uh, this this was the team a few years back when we were allowed to stay next to each other. Now we are all working uh, apart. <laughs> um, so I hope um, if you need more information from me, I, I hope to answer your questions. And um, yeah, thank you for your attention. Thanks, uh, Anka, for this nice uh, overview of the work that you are doing on uh, making this bridge. Um, so we have uh, sufficient time for questions. So I will give uh, the audience a chance to uh, think about it and uh, come up. 
So again, you can raise your hand um, or you can just try to unmute uh, to ask a question to, uh, to Anka. So <clears throat> question from my side uh, as a starter, how much guidance do you think that, that there is already from the industry side? So how much do you as an intermediate organization get the input from the industry where they say, okay, we really want to, to have this whole community focusing on this and this specific reaction or is yeah. it still something that needs to be improved? I, I think it is because um, you see we, we are talking about industry, but it's not really a community out there that that has a, a defined view, right? Um, it, this is how we we look at them. It's like all oh, the big companies, the companies. But um, uh, in reality, what we do is that um, we are um, uh, we are pitching our work and then um, to uh, to individual companies and. We are creating these programs, like for instance, Voltachem, um, and uh, where we show them what can be done, what technologies are emerging, what can be done, and they decide whether uh, it is it is interesting and fitting them uh, or not. And we are adjusting our proposition and, and our program to what their needs are as well. But it is, you know, we have to, yeah, uh, it, it's an ever going process. Yeah. Would it would it be better from your point of view if, if it would be a more open discussion? So if we in the next summit uh, later this year, we will make a dedicated let's say morning session and then try to invite all the big let's say chemical companies, catalysis companies to to try to form uh, a, sh a common view or at least th the main action points. Would that be useful? Um, I think so. It, it is always useful to have to have people uh, say say their mind and uh, speak their mind, right? Um, so uh, yes, uh, I would say so. Um, though, uh, uh, yeah, uh, in in my experience, uh, this can this can lead to, uh, especially when you have a, a, a good mixture, uh, this can lead to connections that you you wouldn't have thought uh, sitting at your desk. <laughs> I think especially now, because normally it's OK if there is a lot of competition between those big industrial companies and that they all develop their own processes and become expert in, for example, fissure drops, catalysis or whatever. But now it's 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 a major challenge that we all face. No one chose for this one. No one decided, oh, I would like to electrify my industry, no. which I've developed in the past uh, decades. Indeed. Um, and, and instead of all trying to do their own trick, um, maybe it would be useful to, uh, to, let's say, open up a little bit more and try to create a centralized vision of this is, needs to be happening. And then if we can make effective use of all the researchers globally that are, that are having the capacity and the knowledge to test new materials and new capabilities, we can streamline the efforts as much as possible to, uh, to make it happen. Yes. Yeah. Y yes, indeed. I think uh, every, 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 um... Um, every step in this direction, you know, it uh, it will help to yeah. sharpen our proposition. Yeah. So if if a new if a researcher at the university finds a new material or really thinks this could be a good solution for a certain reaction, would it be interesting for you to get in contact and and maybe see if you can help that specific <laughs> catalyst to be brought up on this uh, TRL level to more large scale applications? <laughs> this is a very interesting uh, point. Um, uh, it's because um, we, we can do the tests um, in, in our laboratories and, and we are looking for, for high performing materials, right? Because you cannot develop a process without having the proper materials. Um, mm. But um, what is really essential, it's, uh, it's that companies like, like yours exist. Uh, because you can scale it up. Um, so TNO can can only do this this middle range of um, uh, of scaling up. But we are um, in order for a technology to to go further from this TRL six seven where we are stopping. You need to take companies on board with you. Uh, you know that yeah. that can that, that see a business case that that see a way of making money with it and and growing their business in that direction. Um, so I would say I think. Your your question is uh, so the answer to your question is yes we can help but it should not but we are not the the end answer um, yeah. we do need companies like like yours that 
uh, that yeah, works that's, that's, I think I think that's that's understandable. But at least um, maybe for the single researcher, even though he has made a terrific material or, or find a great um, breakthrough, it's maybe difficult to connect to all the different industrial stakeholders uh, to to showcase the new material mm -hmm. or to get the interest. So maybe there is also the connecting part from uh, Altham yeah. to, to at least bring it under the attention of the, the industrial stakeholders and um, um, make them aware of it. Um, um, and then if it's needed, maybe also scale up to the, I think you have the 100 square centimeter uh, module that you are able to test, um, which is relatively yeah. big uh, for most researchers. So that would be also uh, useful. Indeed. So we have, uh, we are doing these tests in, um, in, in, uh, um, larger electrolyzers, let's say, that you would see in, in, in your typical uh, uh, laboratory at uh, the university. Yeah. Um, and, and we are uh, building even higher, um, um, uh, even larger um, uh, installations. That is because uh, the, the problems to tackle uh, are, are changing at different scales, right? So, and yeah. Uh, uh, by uh, by doing our experiments at larger and larger scales, then we find new problems to solve and new challenges. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, not only for the process itself, but also for for the materials, their their stability. Um, um, yes. Um, so yes. Uh, so my message to the uh, to the researchers that are here in the group, uh, if if we are not working together um, uh, through different. Uh, projects or programs already, then um, uh, please feel free to, to contact us if you think that, um, uh, that that we can work together. So questions from the audience. Again, feel free to uh, unmute yourself and uh, give a short introduction about yourself and ask the question. I think, uh, Anka, what would also be interesting is maybe to uh, bring um, the Voltagem team in contact with um, one of the other organizations that we will see in the afternoon is uh, INAM, uh, which is a um, community coming from, from Germany focused on uh, supporting uh, startup companies uh, with a core basis in materials. Um, so we, Fias Particle, have also participated in some of their programs um, and I think I think fostering an ecosystem of more young, um, um, I would say, motivated uh, entrepreneurs that want to bring new electrocatalysts to the market is a very important topic. Um, so maybe there's also a, a good connection between uh, Voltagem and, and that organization. Yes, indeed. So one last time, any question from the audience? Otherwise, we will um, go into the wrap up of the morning session. If not, I want to thank you, um, Anka, for uh, this nice overview and for all the great work that uh, Voltagen is doing. Um, to wrap up the morning session, I will um, go back to the slides that I uh, presented this morning, just to make sure that I think not everybody was in tomorrow, this morning. Um, 